morning. Uh, my name is Malcolm Wills. I'm glad to be with you this morning. I'm here with my wife, Lisa. We are members at Johns Creek United Methodist Church. Uh, and I'm here in an official capacity, actually. Uh, I serve on the United Methodist Committee on Scouting, which is a conference-level uh, organization. It's recognized by the bishop to help promote local churches in the North Georgia Annual Conference uh, to uh, promote scouting and to use scouting as an extension ministry uh, within the local church. And I know here at LAJ First you are blessed with uh, some great leadership as it pertains to scouting. And uh, a couple of things that are notable, first of all, this is the 100 year anniversary of scouting within the United Methodist Church. So for the last 100 years, the Methodist Church and the Boy Scouts of America have teamed up to support scouting overall. So throughout uh, 2020, we will be celebrating the 100th anniversary of scouting within the United Methodist Church. Uh, I'm also up here today to recognize uh, adult leadership because effective scouting programs start with effective adult leadership. And you all are extremely blessed. Uh, at this time, I'd like to ask Mark Bryant to come forward. The award that Mark is going to be getting today Mark will be uh, receiving, he was nominated and received the God and Service Award uh, for his uh, uh, work with youth in terms of encouraging scouts to recognize how faith is an important part of the scouting experience. So Mark, on behalf of the United Methodist Committee on Scouting, uh, congratulations. I also have a, uh, a medallion for you here. If you would like to follow along with this morning's reading, I invite you to turn to the gospel as presented by Matthew, the fifth chapter, beginning with the 13th through the 20th verses. And here we find these words. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? 
It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one after lighting a lamp puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter, will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same, will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. The word of God for the people of God. I don't know about you, but I can remember as a child, I just couldn't wait to grow up. I mean, it seemed like every time I turned around, I was wishing I was older than I was, you know, so that I could do something that I wanted to do, but I wasn't old enough yet to do it. I can remember how excited I was when I got the age that I could join the Scouts. I mean, that was, that was a terrific time in my life, and I finally, I'm finally old enough. I'm not a child anymore. Now I'm a kid. I guess that makes a difference, right? <laughs> anyway, so, but, you know, there were always those, those moments in which I kind of measured how I was doing in life by what I was able to do. And, oh, I can remember with clarity my desire to become 16 so I could drive a car. Oh, my goodness. I just knew that that was going to be one of the great highlights in my life, to get to be 16. And we had gone to the uh, revival services at the temp camp meeting that they had every summer in, in our, our town. And I was 15 at the time. And I remember, I remember them talking about the fact that the day of the Lord was at hand and, and you better be ready because you could walk out this tent tonight and the Lord comes and are you ready and all this. And I mean, the apocalypse was on our heads. And I remember going home that night and praying to God, God, please hold off your apocalypse until I'm 16. You know, if you'll just hold it off until I'm 16, and maybe a few months after so I can drive for a little while, you know, I'll do whatever you want. I don't know if you ever raised any silly prayers to God about such things, but it was important. I needed to get to be 16 and drive a car because, after all, you know, when you're 16 and you drive a car, there's all kinds of freedom. There, there's, a, there's a sense of having finally become of age. You know, you're no longer, now you're not just a kid anymore. Now, now you're a responsible, you know, they tell you that when you, get, you fill out the stuff. You're, you are a responsible adult now. You are driving a car, and they tell you that. And I was all for it. I wanted to be a responsible adult. I didn't want to be a kid. So I achieved it. And I finally got that license with my picture on it. State of Florida. Wow. Okay. This is great. But I didn't have a car. <laughs> so then I had to get a job, you know, to pay for the car. And I had to have a car for the job, so I had a job for the car, and a car for the, and you kind of get it, right? How it all worked out, right? Yeah, it's a vicious circle, vicious circle. But at any rate, it was okay because I had a car, 
and and I was going to experience all that freedom and you know the world was wide open and until I found out that my having a car meant that my mother would assign me taking my younger sister to her practice and my brothers to their things and all this and suddenly it wasn't near as exciting as I thought it was going to be that plateau just didn't really you know pan out the way I thought it would the reason why I mention these things is because I think a lot of us in our Christian walk also sort of look for plateaus in which we finally arrived you know that place in which we can finally sit back and we can say wow okay I finally have gotten here I, I have finally read my Bible and I have finally you know signed on with Jesus I, I'm just I'm, I'm, I'm finally at that place and now I'm just kind of on cruise control for the rest of my life now because after all I'm a Christian I've been baptized I've, I've done all of that stuff and now now I can you know check that one off the list I'm there and unfortunately for a lot of Christians that's kind of what their journey is I just need to reach that plateau whatever that plateau might be well maybe I need to include having taught a Sunday school class for a little while whatever but whatever that plateau is once we get to it then we can just sit back then we can just take it easy then we can then we can say I know God's happy with me because I made it to that point. And the problem is that's not it at all. I think Jesus saw that in some of those around him and realized that they felt as long as they achieved a certain thing, then they were good. They didn't have to worry about anything else. I know he saw it with the scribes and the Pharisees. They felt that if they met the requirements of the law, that was it. As long as they didn't violate the law, they were good. And of course, they kept pointing their fingers at everybody else who did violate the law and, you know, tell them, no, nah, nah, you're terrible. I'm great. I keep the law. Not only do I keep the law, but sometimes I do even better than the law requires because I give a tenth of everything. I even give a tenth of my table salt. That's not required, but I do it. That's how good I am. And Jesus says, no, you don't get it. You just don't understand. To be a follower, to be one who is truly in relationship and in love with God means more than just reaching a point, having achieved something, and that's it. You know, one of the things I do remember about scouts was I was always working on merit badges and I was always working on raising my class and you know so I'd I go through all of those things and of course my ultimate goal was Eagle Scout that was my goal and I had that goal and that's what I was going to do I would because after all once you achieve Eagle Scout that's it right you've done it You've made it. You're, you're at the peak. You're at the top. You're at that plateau. <sighs> Unfortunately, my family moved right in the midst of my doing my Eagle Project to an area that had a lackluster scout program. And I was not able to complete my Eagle Scout. My eldest son completed it for me. He, he went through scouting and he completed his. 
But you see, I, I figured out something. What I learned in scouting, in all of those merit badges, and in all of those different achievements, was I was working on how to live life. It wasn't a plateau at the end. Even if I had gotten my Eagle Scout, that was not the end. Because from that point on, I was always supposed to live according to the Scout law. I was always supposed to live my life according to those things that I had learned. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. Now, now we're familiar with both of those things. We're familiar with salt. Salt's that stuff that, if you still can, you sprinkle it on your food. If you've been told you can't, then you kind of fuss over the fact you can't sprinkle it on your food. But, but we like salt because it adds that taste, that, that seasoning to whatever it is that we're enjoying and eating. We understand salt. It provides that something little special. And we're supposed to be doing that. You and I are supposed to be providing that constant flavoring, that constant seasoning in the world around us. There's never a time when we're supposed to sit back and say, oh, I don't have to do that anymore. I reached my plateau. I got my Eagle Scout. I'm, I'm, you know, I can just sit back. Don't have to worry about it. No. No, we are called to be constantly out there providing a savory world around us. Salt's kind of an interesting thing. In Jesus' day and time, salt was readily available around the Dead Sea, the Salt Sea as they called it. And, and you could go down and there were just literally columns of salt where you could just go in and, and break off a column of it. And, and then, but, but you couldn't use the outside because that had been exposed to the weather and to dirt and dust and all kinds, and, and it didn't have its flavor. So you had to get rid of that, and it's what was in the core is what you used. Salt was a precious thing. In fact, it's interesting because the word salary that you and I worry about each payday actually comes from the word salt. Yeah. Because often you were paid in salt. Precious stuff. And Jesus says, you and I are the salt of the world. The world needs us. We don't have time to just sit back. We also understand light. There's too many times we haven't had it when we need it and stumbled around the house and subbed our toe and all kinds of stuff. When you don't have light, it's a real problem. Going down some of these dark back roads, you know, in the middle of the night, and you're, oh my goodness. Wouldn't it be wonderful if there were street lamps? We know what the importance of light is. But when Jesus is talking to us, he's talking about a very special light. He's talking about his light that shines through us. If we have seen his light, if we have taken that light into ourselves, it is meant to be shining out around us. It's not meant to just something we hoard. It's not something we just, you know, keep to ourselves. It's because the world is in darkness most of the time we can see it and we can be that light that others can see that others can can relax in and find peace and 
joy. But you see, if we just kind of reach that place where we say, oh, I've achieved it, I'm good enough, and I can just sit back. I don't need to worry about shining my light out around the community I'm in. I don't need to. Yes, we do. Because that's exactly what we're called to be. Jesus said, I didn't come to do away with the law, but I came to fulfill it. To make it what it's supposed to be, not what it is. Because for too many, it has simply become a list of achievements and they're done. That's not what it's about. It's about loving and caring for those around you. It's for being willing to, to bring saboriness into their life and bringing light into their world and, and helping them to see who I am through you. Yeah, helping them to see who Christ is through you. One of the things I always was very aware of, anytime I was in my scout uniform, I was on my very best behavior. And the reason was because I, I knew people were looking at that uniform and as poor as a representative I might have been I was representing scouting they would be looking at me and saying ah so that's what a scout is that's what scouting's all about that's what difference or not different scout makes depending on what they saw same thing is true for you and me if they see in us the love of Christ the light of the world the seasoning that just makes life special then we're doing what we're supposed to do but if we kind of hide our Christianity uh, you know six days of the week we only bring it out with our Sunday best and otherwise during the week nobody would even know then we're no better off than the Pharisees and the scribes were we think we're doing all we need to do The reason why I used the title I did this morning is Salt Lamps was because it was kind of a combination. I can remember the first time I saw one of those Himalayan salt lamps. You know, it's a, it's a big chunk of salt with a light in it. And I thought, well, wow, how neat is that? But, but it was really neater than I thought because they said, oh, yeah, because what happens is not only does this give a nice glow of light in the room but it also purifies the air wow I'll bet if Jesus was telling this story today he would have used salt lamps and just combine the two don't let your spiritual life hit a plateau don't be looking for that point at which I can say I finally have achieved it instead keep looking for those places where you can live out that life that Christ has called you into that life which you have chosen to follow keep looking for those places where you can be the salt of the earth where you can be the light that shines into their darkness where you can be that one in whom they meet Christ wherever they're at let us pray 
our gracious God, we thank you so very much that you shone your light into our world and that each of us has had the opportunity to see it to chase away our darkness to bring a seasoning into our lives that makes it full and enjoyable don't we want that for everyone gracious God remind us today and always to be that saltiness, to be that light for everyone around us. That through us, they might seek out you. In the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus the Christ, Amen. Now may the blessings of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with each and every one of us as we go forth from this place this day and into a world that needs to see and hear. Gracious God, send us forth. In your name we go. Amen.